today to talk to you about our clinical experience with interventional MR. This has been an exciting new frontier for us. Why did we choose MR to do procedures with? Well, MR brings a special set of uh, key features uh, that are important and crucial to our procedures that we want to do under imaging guidance. At the very beginning, MR is the best way to achieve the highest resolution of soft tissue. And what does this mean clinically? Well, this means that we can see the tiny lesions uh, many times where other imaging platforms may not be able to visualize these. We also have the ability to MRI. And the nice feature is that it does not deliver any radiation, so no detrimental effects from imaging in the same place many, many times. Now, we can re-image and re-image in the same spot without any concerns from detrimental effects such as radiation. Disadvantages of MR in the past have been that it took a long time to get the sequences and the imaging. However, that has improved over time. And also previously, we did not have compatible equipment and there was a lack of familiarity with how to do procedures in the MR. All this has changed. We now have equipment which is compatible with the MRI and is similar to what we use throughout our other practice uh, with CT, ultrasound, or x-rays. This slide demonstrates how MR adds to the ability to see a lesion. Here you see on the left side a clearly seen tumor within the liver, which is not small. And when you look at the ultrasound and CT images, you cannot see this tumor at all. So therefore, the MR allows us to see it. Therefore, we can target it. And if we can see it, we can also make sure that when we're ablating it, that we're ablating the entire tumor. The MR compatible modalities that we have are MR guided cryoablation, MR-guided laser ablation, MR-guided focused ultrasound, and we recently added MR-guided microwave. Now, where do we use these modalities to treat tumors in the body? Honestly, we treat all over the body, but more specifically, we treat uh, lesions in the kidney, liver, mesentery, prostate, vaginal recurrences, spine, bone, brain, and vascular malformations throughout the body. Some of the main areas that we target are kidney, liver, prostate, brain, and vascular malformations. Starting with the kidney, cryoablation has been a mainstay in the kidney for many, many years now. Here we have a kidney lesion on the left which we targeted with two cryo needles. We then freeze, and as you can see, it is easy to see the edge of the ice, especially as it relates back to the original tumor. And then when we finish freezing, we can give contrast and see exactly where uh, the margins of dead and live tissue are. So this makes it uh, very easy to be confident that we achieved a very nice ablation and a good result for the patient. Next in the liver, we have multiple modalities that we can use within the liver. Cryoablation is one. In the liver, we have a difficult lesion in the central aspect of the liver shown here. We can target that area and watch the tissue freeze and as we're freezing the tissue, we can watch how that encroaches towards the large portal vein in front and the inferior vena cava in uh, behind. And we can monitor that we've covered the cancer, but we have not touched uh, the areas that we don't want to hurt. We can also use laser ablation in the liver. This is a case where there was a small tumor on the right side of the liver, and we're able to target that tumor, put a laser fiber into it, 
And then as we heat the tissue up with the laser, with the MRI, we can actually see the temperature differences in real time as we heat the tissue, killing the tumor uh, in, in place. Next, we also have microwave ablation, which we can utilize in the liver. And microwave uses very similar technology to the laser as far as monitoring. Here we have a microwave needle through a visualized tumor in the liver. And then we can monitor with the temperature mapping, just like we did with the laser, to see that we have killed the tumor in the liver uh, and that we are pleased with the result. Prostate is another location which lends itself well to MR-guided procedures. Prostate lesions are best seen with MRI, so therefore, why not target and ablate with these? Laser ablation has uh, come onto the scene for prostate ablation. And here we have a gentleman uh, that has a low-grade cancer, which is uncomfortable with watching his cancer and wishes to proceed with a minimal uh, invasive therapy with low morbidity. Here we have placement of two laser fibers. And these are based on prior MR-guided biopsy, which was shown Gleason 6 on the right side of the prostate, Gleason negative in the other sites. And here we have that temperature mapping as we saw on the liver, again, which we can do in the prostate with the final result with contrast shown here. Uh, nicely uh, encapsulated area uh, where we encompass the tumor without affecting the remaining prostate. Cryoablation is another modality which is frequently used in the prostate. Here we have a 68-year-old gentleman who has had prior radiation and has a recurrence in his prostate. Now, one challenging feature uh, sometimes with the prostate is that the rectum is close to the prostate. We can expand that distance by injecting saline such that we can move the rectum out of the way. And this allows us to proceed with freezing uh, the right side of the prostate, as shown here, achieving encompassing the tumor and getting rid of the recurrence. Here is another gentleman who is a 59-year-old male uh, that had had prior rectal cancer and had prostate cancer on both sides of his prostate, but was not a surgical candidate and had already had radiation related to his rectal cancer. Therefore, we needed to freeze the entire prostate in order to cure his cancer. And you can see here, multiple needles were placed. We moved the rectum uh, away from the prostate, and then we were able to nicely freeze the prostate and uh, treating the cancer. MR-guided focused ultrasound is another modality which we are able to bring into play for prostate cancer. In this particular modality, uh, the cancer uh, in this patient was located on the right side. And this is the ultrasound transducer which is placed in the rectum. Here we have planning images showing that we have targeted the right side of the prostate and then the focused ultrasound starts stepping through these treating and we're able to see the tissue heating up from the focused ultrasound again with the MRI. And here we have the final result here uh, where we uh, give contrast and see a nicely treated right side of the prostate. Finally, Vascular malformations are another targeted area uh, that we have that lend themselves to being treated with MR-guided procedures. Many of these vascular malformations had failed standard treatments and are looking for potential solutions uh, to treat the vascular malformation, which many times causes extreme pain. One way that we can treat that is by freezing it with cryoablation here we have a fairly extensive vascular malformation in the right shoulder, as shown here. 
we can target this area with MRI, place the needles in, and then you can see the ice form uh, within the tissue freezing that vascular malformation. The other method that we bring to bear against the vascular malformations is laser ablation. Here's a gentleman that has a very small lesion in the muscles of the right back and shoulder. We're able to target this, placing laser fibers into this lesion, and then we can heat this up again, watching the heating with the MRI, treating the lesion. This process of using MRI to do interventional procedures is an ongoing uh, study. It is an ongoing process where uh, a whole team of individuals specialized around MRI and MRI procedures have brought to bear many different specialties and many different areas of expertise to make this possible. And so this has been a team effort here at Mayo Clinic, and we are excited about the future that it holds. Thank you.